Hi everyone, in this video we'll take a look at how I got decent motor control inside Marlin. Uh, first, the initial thing that I planned uh, to do was to use the gcode command process subcommand now that you can see on my screen right now. Uh, that is inside the gcode.cpp file. Um, what it does is simply uh, it uses an argument which is uh, a string or a char um, with your gcode line and the gcode command that you want to run and it then takes care of parsing the command and uh, analyzing it and running it without interrupting the print. Uh, so it's a really clean and easy way to do it but uh, it has a few limitations. So the first one being that it's um, based on G-code and G-code is limited and for my application, which is controlling two stepper motors, uh, this is not a viable option. So um, for two reasons, the first one being that G-code cannot control a specific stepper motor very easily. Uh, the second being that in order to control a different uh, extruder motor, because my two motors are connected to the extruder port on the motherboard, um, you need to use the tool change function, which is T0, T1, T2, um, and select a different filament. But what I'm doing here is recreate, replacing that tool change function with my own function because we're trying to do a multi-material upgrade. So we need to change and uh, create our own tool change function so we cannot use the tool change function to control a specific stepper motor. So for the ones that are here just to get distant motor control, if what you want to do is doable with G-code, use the process of command now and uh, there is a, um, a, a little command inside Maryland to convert your string to a char which is PSTR, so you could use that. Um, so what did I do next in order to find uh, the correct way to control the step motors? Well, I try to understand exactly how one specific, how the gcode command worked exactly. So the command that is the closest to what I want to do would be the g0g1 command, uh, which you can find in the motion subfolder inside gcode um, of the of Marlin. Uh, and the g0g1 command um, is what I'm looking for because it's uh, any linear movement, uh, and that's what I want to do. So uh, I went down the rabbit hole and searched every single file related to that G0G1 command and tried to understand them in depth. So uh, first I will go uh, over each file and important function, but I won't go into too many details so we won't analyze the code line by line. Uh, the G0G1 command uh, has uh, a few conditionals. So first if is running um, in order to do the, the actual command. Uh, is running is a state of Marlin, uh, so it returns uh, the state of the printer. Um, then you have uh, for a few conditions for SCARA printers or if uh, G0 feed rate is defined. A uh, SCARA printer, for the people that don't know, I'm gonna go get it on my screen right now. So SCARA A SCARA printer is basically a printer that has two arms um, in order to do the X and Y axis. So I will show you what it looks like right now. Uh, and it looks like that. And uh, it's really interesting to see it print. Um, really weird printer, uh, but kind of cool at the same time. Uh, so that's for some specific printer. We don't really need to take care about that because we want uh, simply to control a specific stepper motor and not the entire uh, movement system, so uh, we don't really care of the kinematics of the printer. Uh, then there is a first really important function which is get destination from command and uh, after that it handles uh, auto retract and a few things like that and then the prepare line to destination. So these are the two most important function uh, inside the G0G1 command and we'll take a look at both of them right now. So first let's go to the get destination from command. Uh, when you quick tip inside Visual Studio Code, uh, when you want to uh, go look where this is defined, 
you press Control left click and it will open uh, the, the file where it's defined. Here's in gcode.h, uh, but what I want is the actual cpp file, so I'll go into gcode.cpp and search for get destination from, from command. So get destination from command. Here it's defined right there. Um, and what this does is simply takes the info that comes from the parser and um, interprets it and uh, sets the actual destination. So destination is a variable that is uh, global to the entire program and that is used by other part of the program. Uh, and we will re remember that destination variable because we will use it. So um, and it attributes uh, all the actual destination based on what the parser sees. So what is a parser? A parser is simply a little program that takes in uh, a line of code, the, the line of G code that you send, and it splits it into the different variables that uh, are useful in different uh, pieces. So let's say that you send the G0 X50 command, it will split it into the um, command letter, which is G, the command number, which is zero, then the command uh, target axis, which is X, and then the value of the movement, which is 50. And uh, you can see a few of those right here, like the parser value axis unit, which returns the um, axis that is concerned. So um, this is what the G code um, get destination from command does. Uh, now let's go back to the g0 g1 command and go to the prepare line to destination. So once again, this one brings us to the motion.h file, uh, and we will go to the motion.cpp and find that prepare line to destination function, which is right here. Uh, this function um, does very few things, but they are actually necessary when you're doing uh, uh, processing a G-code command. Uh, first, it applies the motion limit, so that based on the destination that we want to go to, and this destination is once again the destination that is found by the uh, get destination from command. Um, and what it does, it applies motion limit. That means it will prevent your carriage uh, system, let's say your extruder, from crashing into the side of your printer. And that entire thing is based on the uh, end stop position and your printer dimensions. Uh, then it has a conditional to prevent cold extrusion and prevent lengthy extrudes. So there are security features inside Merlin that prevent you from uh, pulling filament in and out when the nozzle is below a defined temperature, which is by default 170 degrees, uh, and prevent lengthy extrude. This is a feature that I have disabled right now because um, when I want to load and unload the new filament, I need to do moves that are more than uh, 200 millimeters. Um, and this uh, triggers the prevent length extrude. That's why I had to disable it, but I will find a way to have it enabled uh, in the um, end product. Uh, and after that, it handles dual carriages. We don't really need to take a look at that. And it calls um, another function, which is line to destination Cartesian. Um, and after that, it updates the position and it considers the move to be processed and uh, to be. So it updates the position. That means that the move actually took place once this function is called. So current position equals destination. That means that the actual position uh, is a destination. The move took place. Quite logical. Uh, and we will take a look at the line to destination Cartesian command right now. So this one is also in motion.cpp. Uh, and what it does is get the scaled feed rate per um, in millimeters per second. Uh, it handles mesh um, bed leveling. So if you're printing with uh, so a mesh-based leveling uh, 3D printer, so when you have uh, when you have your leveling process, it takes a few points and then creates a mesh. Uh, and this can handle a few things from a, a slightly bent. Uh, print bed uh, to one with an angle. So uh, it's really specific and it handles that. Uh, and then it calls the planner buffer line destination scale free rate per millimeter per seconds, active extruder and um, returns false. And uh, when you return false, uh, it says here caller will update current position. And that's what we saw previously when it said current position equals destination. Uh, that's what it does. So uh, we'll take a look at planner buffer line, uh, which is the next really important function inside that program. 
Uh, and this one is in planner.h, uh, obviously, but we'll find it in planner.cpp because this is where the stuff really happens. So we'll look for planner, buffer line. And this function, um, as the command right here has, says, adds a new linear movement to the buffer. Um, and it also handles translation for, to Delta and Scara. Uh, Scara being, being the printer that I just showed you and Delta printers being the printers with the uh, three stepper motors um, handling uh, both height and movement. So um, what you can see here is uh, it gets the machine position. Uh, it applies the modifiers. Uh, these are little things like offset if you want to offset your uh, x-axis a bit to the right because your end stop is not positioned exactly where it should be. Uh, so these are the offsets. Then it handles the different kinematics of your printer, if it's a delta printer, if it's a, a scar printer and all those things. And it calls the return buffer segment, um, which here takes in the machine uh, variable, which is basically the x, the y, the z, and the e uh, values. Uh, the feed rate in millimeters per second, the extruder, and the uh, distance of the move that you want to do. So this buffer segment um, line looks a lot like what we want. It, we can input here the extruder, the size of the extruder move we want to do. We can specify the speed of the move, uh, the active extruder. So that will be what that that was the main feature that I was looking for because in the, in the regular G code I cannot choose a specific extruder for my move that easily. And uh, this one is optional, as you will soon see. So we will take a look at that buffer segment function, uh, which is right here. And as you can see, it has uh, a few, it's defined a few times right here, uh, simply because this one um, takes in the uh, machine variable, which has inside of it both uh, the, um, the uh, x, y, z, and e. And it returns the uh, buffer segment with A, B, C, E, so all the axes separated. Uh, so if I want to use this one, I was already separate them. Uh, I won't do a machine variable with all the different variables in it. Uh, and as you can see right here, uh, I will simply input zero because I don't want to do any move, zero because I don't want to do any move on the Y axis, zero, no move on the X axis. And here I will specify the length that I need. So 10, minus 10, depending on if it's loading or unloading. Uh, then I don't have a distance per millimeter argument, so we won't take care of that. Then the next one will be the feed rate, the extruder, and then uh, millimeters. And here millimeters is the length of the movement if known. Uh, I could calculate it, but I won't, and it's not necessary in our case. Uh, so we'll simply leave that blank. Um, now let's go to the uh, to my actual code, which is the MP MMU code, which is in features MP MMU MP MMU .cpp. And right here, you can see that I've done a few things um, to the uh, case zero. This is where we're going to be testing our uh, thing. And the first thing that I tried at that point uh, was simply setting a planner buffer line. Uh, Okay, I will show you what I did. I will erase that. And here. Okay, no, not that one. Um, so planner buffer line. Uh, and we want zero on the x axis, zero on the y, zero on the z. Let's say 50 on the E, now 50 is a bit long, we will say 10, and a feed rate of 5 millimeters per second, which is quite slow, let's do 10 so that we don't have to wait too much. Uh, the active extruder will say the first one is going to be 0, and the um, millimeters, we don't know them, uh, and I won't calculate them, so we will leave that blank, and that, and then we will copy paste it and select different extruder, because as I say, what I want to do is control both extruder so I, I need to check that I'm able to control both extruder one after the other so this one will leave you one and it will change the command length so that we are sure that it does what it does so this one will be simply one so it shouldn't move uh, at all basically and I'm going to show you what I was quite surprised about uh, when I first ran my code so I will build that 
and here it's building. I will get the SD card and then I will film you what it actually does uh, when I do that. So I'm now filming the board. I have the SD card into my computer. As you can see, I will delete the old firmware file. The build has succeeded. So I'll go in the PIO folder, build sheet track, big tree, SKR Pro. I will reveal in File Explorer. I will find inside that the firmware.bin file, which I will send to the SD card. Okay, so I've successfully loaded the firmware onto the SD card. I'm going to plug it inside the board. I'm going to hit reset. Uh, as you can see, the green line is flashing, which means that the firmware is being updated. Uh, once that this has completed, I will run the T0 command uh, from the screen. So G code T0. And once I send it, you should normally see um, the one of the motors turning for a rather long period of time and another one running for way shorter uh, if it works as planned. But here, as you can see, when I hit send, this motor turns and both motor turns for about the same period of time when one of them should be way shorter. So this means that I have a problem and I will show you uh, how I fixed it uh, right now. Okay, so now you just saw that the movements were actually quite similar in length, which is a normal since we specified 10 and 1 in the dimensions that it needed to move. Uh, and the solution and the cause of this error is actually quite simple. Uh, when we go back to the G0 G1 command, we can see that it calls uh, the prepare line to destination function, uh, which we already took a look at. Uh, and inside that, um, prepare line to destination function, uh, you call the line to destination Cartesian, and um, after that there is the buffer segment function. Uh, but inside that prepare line to destination, there is a current position equals destination. And this is the place where the uh, position is updated uh, for the uh, entire program. Uh, and that's what was causing all the issues. Because we're running the buffer segment, uh, we are skipping the uh, position update and if you don't update the position after you have done a move, uh, this will of course cause some problems. So now let's go back to the mpmu.cvp and I'll show you how to fix it. So first, because those moves are absolute, we need to define do like uh, define them relatively. So at least for the extruder part. So uh, as you know, I have two motors I want to control. One is the idler. And the other one is the extruder. And here I'm doing simulations for the extruder itself. So the, the metal rod with the gears on it. And this one needs to move uh, relatively to its current position. So it needs to feed the film in 10 millimeters or the opposite. Uh, but with the other motor uh, being the idler, I need to move to a specific position. So that would be um, an absolute position. Uh, and in this case, uh, writing it directly this way is a quite uh, good way to do it. But since I want to control the extruder motor, I want it to be relative to the current position. So what I would do would be current position dot e to specify that it is the extruder position plus 10. Uh, we will make it this one a bigger move uh, so that you can clearly tell the difference when I test it. So current E position um, plus 100. And then I will update the position. So current position dot E equals current position dot E plus 100. And uh, we will do basically the same for that one. We'll change the one to a 10 so that you can more clearly tell the difference. E plus 10, and we will re-update the position as well. Let me copy paste that right here uh, and change the value to 10. Otherwise, the update won't be actually accurate. Uh, and now this um, actually solves a few problems. The first one being that I was unable to run uh, Gcode moves after running uh, the tool change function. So when I was running T0, it was doing somewhat it somewhat properly, even if the distances weren't right. Uh, but then when I run a regular G-code command like uh, G0x50, uh, it was causing some 
problems uh, because the extrude position wasn't updated so it was moving it when it didn't need to. Uh, and now that this is uh, done I will compile it and uh, I will see you when this is done. Okay, so I finished building the firmware. I will hit reset to upload it to the board and then we will redo the test with uh, the T0 command. Let me get both of the motors in the screen at least so that you can see them. And uh, now we will do the T0 command. I will focus on the screen so you can see what I'm typing. G code T0 and then send. I will refocus on the rest of the motors so that you can see them when they're running. Now I'm hitting send and this motor should spin for a good amount of time now that I've changed the value to 100 and this one should be 10 so uh, a few seconds. And this is exactly what we were expecting, uh, a way longer move and a way shorter move. Now we'll do uh, another few tests to check that everything is working correctly. Uh, the first one being running the commands back to back. So I reset T0. Uh, it should do the exact uh, same movement um, if everything were fine and the position has been updated correctly. Uh, after that, because as you can see it worked, uh, what I'm going to do is simulate what would happen if I were to continue the print normally. So let's say that we've just changed filament and we're continuing the print and let's say the printer sends the command G0 X50 and send that. Now it shouldn't move the extruders at all because I haven't specified any feed rate. So if our position update worked properly, the, the, the motors should stay still. And they do. That means that everything is working properly. Okay, so now that this is done, I have uh, all the tools I need to control the motors uh, perfectly for my need. Uh, what I need to do now in this project is uh, create the homing sequence for, for the idler because you need to have a precise position for that one, uh, as I just said before, um, which is not the case of the actual extruding part. Uh, next, uh, I will mount it uh, onto the actual printer and we'll, uh, we'll be able to do a few test prints and uh, be able to tune it uh, in order to work properly. Uh, and at that point, I guess we should be really close to an actual functional uh, multi-material upgrade. Uh, if you stayed until now and you liked this video and would like to see more, uh, make sure to subscribe. Uh, if you liked the video, drop a like as well. Uh, you may have noticed a bit of change, at least on the physical, when I was filming the physical part, and that's because uh, I actually just broke my phone. I'm going to show you on screen right now a few shots of what it looks like right now. Uh, I have started to repair the actual screen um, because I actually, uh, it's totally dead. The um, I dropped it when taking a picture and it, the stone actually broke both the glass in front and the actually the digitizer in LCD or AMOLED in that case part of the screen and um, because of that I the, the phone was absolutely bricked and uh, it was actually kind of sad because uh, the uh, it was the Mi 90 Pro so it just got the Mi UI 12 update and this was fixing a lot of problems I had with camera quality um, so the limited bitrate uh, was removed at least from what I've seen so I was really happy to see that and uh, I broke it so I cannot really uh, show you what it looks like but uh, I should get it repaired in a matter of a few weeks uh, and right now you may have seen that the actual video quality was quite decent so that because I used an old iPhone uh, which actually worked quite well even if it took me a bit of time to uh, get set up. Um, hope you like the video and I will see you later.